In this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at the topic of nested loops and that's the idea of putting one loop inside another loop. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go through an example that will hopefully illustrate how that can be used and what that allows us to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write a very simple program that's going to generate uh, a pattern. And it's a quite a simple pattern. So it's just going to, I'm just going to make a kind of a grid. And my first pass through this program, I'm just going to do five of them. So you can see I've done five put statements, that's five different lines. And on each one of those lines, there are five of those characters. So when I run this, I'm going to end up getting a five by five grid for my output. Um, now the thing we want to do is how can we make this program dynamic? So in order for this program to be dynamic, that means that I want to accept some user input. So the first thing we might want to do is allow the user to specify rows. So what would that look like? Well, right now we have five rows. So if the user is going to specify the rows, then we're going to have to ask the user how many rows they want. So at the top here, we're going to create a variable called numRows. And that's going to be an integer. We will prompt the user how many rows. And get numRows. And by doing that, what we're hoping to do is take this code, which has five fixed rows of these characters, and we're instead, we want to use a, a loop so for count row one, two, num rows. Now you might wonder, well, why did I say count row? Why didn't I just use count? Or why didn't I just use a variable, for example, i, which is traditionally used in loops? And both of those would be fine. I'm just trying to make it really clear uh, that this is the variable that has to, this is the loop and the variable that has to do with rows because we're going to end up looking at columns as well. And four. Now you can see right now in my loop, I've still got all five of these put statements. But the whole point of this was that the number of each put statement signifies a row. So I don't want to hard code all five rows. Now I'm going to let the software do the, the rows for me. So depending on what the user enters for num rows, that's going to specify how many times this put statement gets executed. So if I run that, I'm going to be asked how many rows. If I put in five, I get a pattern just like I saw before. If I run it again, but this time I put 15, I get a much longer pattern. So that's the first part. So dynamic user to specify rows that seemed to have worked fine now the other thing I'd like to do would be to dynamically user to specify columns so that would mean that instead of me always having five of these characters hard-coded I'd like the user to be able to specify how many of those characters are we going to put in here in order to do that, I'm actually going to go into a separate programming window. And so this is just where we're going to handle the number of columns. So what, what is that going to look like? Well, it's going to have something pretty similar to what we had before, number of columns. Actually, you know, yes, that's fine. Uh, and it's all going to be focused on this idea of this put statement. So put and five number signs. But we don't want to be putting all five of these number signs at a time. We want to only be putting one at a time. So the first thing I'd like to do, actually even before I get to this variable, is ask the question, well, how can I produce a line like this where I only produce, where I only output one of these symbols at a time? And so the first thing you might think of is something like this. And you can see this is going to, I'm just going to, well, there I'm outputting one symbol at a time, but when I run that, I end up with a vertical column. So that's not what I wanted. I could put those on the same line, put a dot dot on the end of each, 
And if I run that, well, they're getting closer. The only thing I need now is some better spacing. So how about I put in space after each one and I run that and there we go. So there's that first line. So I'm trying to produce that effect. But I don't want it always to be five. And this is where we go back to the variable num columns. And that's an int. And then we're going to ask the user how many columns. And we're going to get num columns. Then I'm going to want my loop to output the number of columns. So the idea is rather than always hard coding five of these things, I'm going to actually only have one of them, but I'm going to repeat that one as many times as I need to. For count column from one to num calls, I'm going to output this and end four. And I'll do some formatting there. So I ask the user how many columns they want, and then I count that up to whatever number they give me. I'm going to output this character. And if I run that and say I want 10, and there we go, we have 10 across. So if we could combine these two programs, this one handles the downs and this one handles the across, that should solve our problem. So how do we merge these two things together? Well, the code. The code that produces the columns is right here in the original program. And so this is where the idea of a nested loop goes. If we just look at this program as it exists right now, this is a simple counted loop. The reason why we're doing nested loops is that in order to do this, in order to output the columns here, I have to replace this highlighted code with the loop that does that in my new section of program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this piece of code and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to replace this section instead of having that put statement I'm going to put the loop that I just added and I hit F2 and that takes care of my formatting and if you see take a look at the formatting we've got a for statement and between so between that for and that end statement we have this code and that code is yet another loop so it's got its own for it's got its own end for and then what does that inner loop do it outputs what is this section of code supposed to do that's supposed to assemble a column but we're going to assemble a column multiple times to produce multiple rows then we bring over the rest of our code so we need this variable number of columns we're going to declare that at the top just like we did the number of rows. We're going to ask the user how many columns do they want. And we're going to do that right beneath where they number of rows. And then, oh, let me put that uh, where it's supposed to go with respect to the comment. And then we start our nested loop. So let's go ahead and run this and see if it uh, works out. How many rows? Let's say three rows. So that means it's going to count one, two, three down. And let's make them really long columns. Let's make them 10 each. Oh, not quite right. We've still got a mistake here. So where did we go wrong? To know where we went wrong, we actually have to go back to our column code. And notice that... I used the dot dot so that I could put these characters on the end of each line. Um, so they would they would uh, add together and keep staying on the same line. But the problem I've run into here is they're all staying on the same line. I'm never going on to a new line. So the way that I fix that is I have to, once I'm done putting all of my characters on the same line, I have to put in this special put statement where it doesn't actually put anything but the important part is we don't have a dot dot on the end here so this is actually going to move the cursor to the next line because for these ones uh, we stay on the same line so we somehow we need to move the cursor to the next line so I need to take that extra command and I need to put it after the loop ends it doesn't go inside the loop. If I put it inside the loop, I'd end up with these characters on a different line every time. But if I put it after the loop ends, 
then when I try running this again, how many rows? Let's do that again. Three rows, 10 columns. And there we have three rows of 10 columns. If I try that again a different way, I'm going to say 20 rows and six columns. So now it's 20 rows top to bottom and it's only six columns wide. So you can see, so there's an example of a nested loop and something else worth mentioning here, um, which is this variable count column is only available for use between this for and this end. This variable count row is only available between this for and this end. Once you get out of these loops, once you get out of the, their individual loops, those variables disappear, so they can't be used. So remember, a, a loop variable like this for a counted loop can only be used inside the loop where it was defined. Okay, so I hope that that example illustrates for you how to construct a loop within a loop, noticing that we have a complete loop. So this one is a complete section, a complete loop. And then this one is also a complete loop, one within the other. And you can have triple nested loops and quadruple nested loops. It starts to get really confusing and difficult to, to manage, but in theory it is possible. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. And if you need to, take a look at the other ones on just basic loops.